Shalom, Kahala Yahweh, Bashem Yahshai, Bashem Rukh Kardash. Double honors, my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect who are the house of David reborn again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Yashar who today are known as Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing their true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about High Priest Abba Bivens, who has been a topic of late amongst the Hebrew Israelite community, and that is because of his recent book that was um, made public, right, or brought back into the uh, public eye, that is, which we're going to uh, shed some light on. But let's go ahead and read this scripture first which prophesies the coming of Abba Bivens. This is Malachi 4 and 5. Behold, I will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. These I come and smite the earth with a curse. So Abba Bivens, as you can see here in the lower right of this image, he is a prophet um, that we understand and have faith and believe that he is Elijah coming back before the great and horrible day of destruction, right, which is also referred to as the second coming of the Messiah. Right? Uh, he is also John the Baptist in the reincarnation after he was Elijah, right? and uh, John the Baptist that is. And uh, in our our time, our generation, he was on the Bivens, right? He is a man who had been part of a of this group you see up here, known as the. Uh, Commandment keepers, okay, and in in being part of this group, Abba Bivens. Let's go ahead and actually look into the uh, holy procession of the high priest of Israel chart. I mean. So when you get into the where this truth of the Bible has reemerged from, right? It can all be traced back to the. Uh, Slaves that came off of the, the ships, right during, or, you know, during the North Atlantic slave trade. This truth goes back to a man named Gabriel Prosser, right? and it goes on to, you know, down to Nat Turner, um, and and so on and so on, right. But it goes ultimately to a man called called Wentworth Arthur, right, and he was the. Uh, the, the rabbi, right, or the, 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 the main teacher there at the commandment keepers. Right? Well, he had a student who had joined the school named Abba Bivens. Well, Abba Bivens, after being with the commandment keepers for a while, basically separated himself from the commandment keepers. And the reason is, is because he had been awoken by the Lord. Right? He had been given an understanding that not only the so-called Negroes were the Israelites, but that the, those people who call themselves the, you know, Jews, right, the Israelis, right, they in fact were not the, the uh, Jews, they were Edomites, okay? Abba Bivens was given many spiritual revelations, right? And um, like I just said, he also, um, had the realization that the Latinos and the Native Americans were also Israelites, that um, that the commandment keepers was were basically learning from the, the enemy, right? And that's true because when you look at the commandment keepers and, and the groups that come out from their teaching, like the A H I J, right? Um, these guys basically practice Judaism, right? This is why they speak Yiddish. This is why they're in, the Torah only um, Israelites. That's why um, a 
a lot of these people, the, the black only Israelites, they come from the teachings of the commandment keepers and the schools that came from them. Well, Abba Bivens, when he separated himself, besides having all these revelations, he also had a revelation of uh, the, the proper language, right? our language, and so that way it could be restored to us. Right? We understand um, our, the original Hebrew as the Lashawan Kodash, which is basically the tongue holy or the holy tongue, which was also prophesied to be brought back you know, you know, into the world, which we'll get into in a bit. But Abba Bivens, like I had said, he had gone on to start the ICUPK, the Israelite Church of Universal Practical Knowledge. Now this is not the ISUPK, right? Which went on and uh, basically picked up the remains of what was left of this church after it broke up right? and uh, basically took it on to themselves and uh, try to revive it and basically make money off of it, right? It's basically, you know, like when a business goes, goes bankrupt and some other company comes and buys that business's name and starts selling cheap merchandise using that name, that's basically what ISUPK is, right? Well, like I said, from the original ICUPK, right, you had the group known as the Seven. These were like the seven heads that uh, the truth, you know, uh, came from, right? But again, you gotta remember, these, all these men learned under Abba Bivens. Well, three of these men, um, which are highlighted here, were men of importance that this truth, when this truth came out of, uh, you know, they were pivotal in its, in its, uh, organization and its development and where it is today, right? That, those men would be High Priest Ariel, Elder High Priest Yaikwam, and King Masha, okay? Eventually, the King Masha would separate and basically go on and teach the House of David school, right? And that House of David spawned a, a few schools, right? One being... Uh, the, the uh, ISU, the IUIC, which is basically a, it's a false group, right? They're basically teaching for money. They're a 501c3. And the other group is the House of Israel, which also goes off. They're also a 501c3. These, these people here have made it into a business, and they're not about the scriptures. Well, there's been another group that came out of the House of David, which when you look into it, these men here which started Great Millstone would be the spiritual um, you know, procession of the rightful teaching and the rightful um, procession, I guess you could say, of the, this knowledge, right? And these men are responsible for the current state of, or leading the current state of, of the House of Israel right now, okay? These are the true leaders of Israel, right? The Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans upon the earth today, these are your true leaders right here, okay? These are the leaders that God himself, God of the Bible, have set up upon this world to lead you Israelites back to the truth, okay? And we know this because of this man, Abba Bivens, right? He is the, the, the man who fulfilled that prophecy that he would turn the hearts of the children back to the Father. And that's why that you know screenshot I just showed you with the procession of, of the priest, this is the man who started it all, right? So regardless of what this man you know was trying to do himself, history and his actions, you know, from his you know from his history that, that we can look upon prove that he fulfilled the prophecy, right? It's because of this man that everything that we have here. You know, us Hebrew Israelites are awoken in this day who have returned to the understanding of our true heritage, as it says in, uh, in Hosea 1 and 10, and um, that we would basically be, be told that we are the children of, of the living God, right? This man has has made that possible because he has started the, he started the real awakening process, okay? This is Matthews 17 and 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, 
Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Yahweh answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. Right? That's the point. But I say unto you that Elias has come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. And the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. All right. So you see, Abba Bivens, in his previous life, he had come not only as Elijah, but also as, as a, or Elias, but also John the Baptist. Okay. And now, right, in this time right here, where the Messiah also says that he shall truly, uh, that he shall truly shall first come and restore all things. This right here is talking about when he would come back as Abba Bivens. Okay. So this right here, you know, the, the the subject that I'm talking about is literally this prophecy, you know, both in Malachi and Matthew, literally playing out. Okay. Well, as I said, uh, Abba Bivens, you know, through vocab Malone, uh, his works has brought out Abba Bivens' uh, book that he wrote in 1950s. Now. It's a, uh, um, a fairly long book, right? But it's a good read. I've read a little bit of it. And uh, the point of the, I'm making this video is because there's a lot more uh, in-depth, you know, details about Abba Bivens that are being told by the apostles that I can't even, you know, compare to, right? But at least what I wanted to make this video for is because I wanted to make this uh, PDF book available. So if you go to the descriptions, you'll see a link to download this PDF, you know, do yourself a favor, read it. It's only 79 pages, I believe. And it's a very good book, right? And it's, if anything, it's a confirmation of what we've been learning, right? Showing that the apostles, you know, that we have today haven't been making things up, right? That they are basically teaching the same things that has been taught by their teachers, right? Now, yes, we understand that there's been additional discoveries since then, but for the, for the most part, the, the core message, the core teachings are still there, right? And they still reverberate till this day. So this shows you, man, that this isn't a fly-by-night doctrine that is just being made up, okay? So let's go and read real quick a little bit of this book, and then we'll... A good uh, excerpt is on uh, page seven. This last paragraph. Let's go read this. It says, People will try to give you an argument that there has been true teachings throughout the Gentiles' dis dispensation. And Abba Bivens here, when he says Gentiles' dispensation, he's talking about these other nations, right? The so called Caucasians, the so called Japanese, Chinese, and all these other nations upon the earth today. Okay? Throughout the Gentiles' dispensation, what we can safely say that there has not been because the book was sealed until the time of the end of the Gentiles dispensation. We know this to be true by referring you to Daniel 12 and 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words of the, and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased if we would just consider the sayings of Daniel, we will see that knowledge has increased in everything and many run, are running to and fro in the earth and no place to go. That's why we can safely say that this mystery, which has been hidden from the Gentiles through all their age, ages and generations, and has now been revealed to the people of God. We know this to, to, to be true by referring you to Colossians 1 and 26. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Although many people have gone through th 
gone to theological seminaries and the schools of learning, they have missed out on the understanding of the scriptures. All these religious teachings that has been handed to us came through the con conception of the wicked man, which is the Gentiles. The people that control this, this civilization are the wicked. We know this to be true by referring you to Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Anything that is given into the hands of anyone, he is in, a, in authority. These facts cannot be denied. So when you get into this Bible, or I'm trying this book from Abba Bivens, it basically reads like a, a lesson. Right? So like I said, this is why it's a good uh, a book to read. And, you know, I'm even contemplating, you know, just doing a, a reading of this book, right? But it's a very long book. And it would, if I did, it'd be, you know, cut up into multiple pieces. But either way, you know, uh, just for yourself, it's a good read. Right? And, and what I just read to you is pretty much how the Bible, or how this book, excuse me, is, is, is written, right? It has... You know statements of facts backed by by bible scriptures all the way from the beginning to the end right so it's a good read now besides this book right which is basically still holds strong to the teachings of today right this man also came up with uh the understanding of how to properly read the, the proper hebrew uh, language, right, and also how to, how uh, the, the uh, alphabet works, right, or the Lashem of Gadash. And, and this is is basically what us Hebrew Israelites uh, um, understand and use today, right? When, when you get into the Hebrew that we speak, um, it is what we have faith in and believe is the original uh, Paleo Hebrew, which is what Moses spoke in. The, the prophets of old spoke, right? And uh, it's not similar to what the uh, so-called Jews speak, right? They speak Yiddish, which is a Germanic um, European, uh, you know, mix up of languages, right? Which is basically simply using the characters of our, of our language to hide their language within, okay? But this language here was also prophesied to come back, like I had mentioned earlier. Right? And you can read about this prophecy in Zephaniah 3 and 9. For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh, Bashem Shai, to serve him with one consent. Right? So you see, that right there is a prophecy showing that in the end times, right before the second coming of the Messiah, we would be given back our original language, right? And that's exactly what happened with Abba Bivens getting the proper understanding. And when you hear the story of how he actually got the understanding, uh, you could tell it's it's spiritual, right? Let's. Um, I have a recording of Apostle Tahar actually explaining how um, High Priest Abba Bivens got the understanding. Let's go and uh, listen to that now. Oh, um, there was this one guy that I believe either came up with Abba Bivens, uh, uh, Elder uh, Abba Bivens, um, that this guy said that he would study the Hebrew and a, a man in a gray suit came to him and, and showed him how to pronounce the uh, I, the I sound and the R sound, R and I, and uh, Vocab Malone, you know, said that Oh really? That happened. So not too, not too many words. He said in his words. Anyway, the scripture say in um, Hebrews the thirteenth chapter, be not forget be be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for some have entertained angels on the whip. So that could have actually happened, and that could have been an angel, and we be, believe that was an angel. If that actually happened, a man came in came in with a gray suit on showing him how to pronounce the uh, Hebrew and that actually happened then that had to be an angel so there you have it right so I believe 
right? Just like many others who understand that there is something very strong and spiritual going on, right? Especially with these men, uh, you know, who have been bringing out the strength, right? Starting with Abba, High Priest Abba Bivens, all the way down to the Apostle. Right? There is very uh, many spiritual aspects to the whole thing, right? And for you to not believe in any of this, then hey, that's simply on you, right? You have to have faith to believe in this, right? And you know, me wholeheartedly, this is what I believe is the truth, right? What Apostle Tahar uh, gave as a testimony right now, I believe that. That is, fulfills that prophecy, right? That a man, right? Even if he wasn't, a, 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 you know, a, a flying angel or whatever, right? He wasn't an actual angel. And he was just a, a standard man who did happen to be a scholar who understood the Paleo Hebrew and, and understood things. And he just happened to come into the school and and talk to Abba Bivens and just happened to ex, you know explain to him how it all worked. Then that man's path and was set by the Lord Himself, right? So all that is, is, is spiritual, right? So just like the the events of this book being released right now it is also spiritual so this is why i want to share this pdf with all you Akium. that way you don't have to search for it or you know put your email in to download it just go to the description click on it download it enjoy Akium, right so hopefully let's read this and then we're out of here this is revelations 14 and 13 and i heard a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Right? And Abba Bivens is a perfect example of, of this man. This man died. He was sadly killed by you know some Arabs. You know, so goes the story. And, and but he died in this truth, right? And when you look at the fruits of his labor. All us Hebrew Israelites who are awoken today, who understand who we are, we have this man to think, right? So this is why we know that this is John the Baptist, Elijah, who has been brought back in the reincarnation today, right? So again, enjoy this book, Akim. Hopefully this video was edifying. Until the next time, I want to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rukal Pradash, double honors to my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.